Today we're going to be talking about my method for coming up with ideas. Preparation, scheduling time, environment, isolation, goals, and following the rabbit hole. Let's get started. The first step of coming up with ideas is your preparation. You have to prepare your mind to be innovative on a given subject. So that means researching a general topic. It typically means not researching competitors. Innovation only happens on subjects that your mind is actively spinning on. So for example, if I want to create something new in the crypto space, I'd research NFT technology, I'd research blockchains, I would go get the industry buzz, I would look at what some of the pain points are when I'm learning a new subject. I would look for mathematical limitations. What's the Sybil problem? Why is that difficult? Who's struggling with it? How are they getting around it? Pay special attention to early difficulties. These are the problems that early adopters are going to be dealing with. And typically in rising markets, especially just alleviating these pain points is going to be the key. The next step is I schedule time, 45 minutes to 90 minutes. I never go over 90 minutes. Your mind is going to be working in a peak state when you're coming up with ideas, and you can only sustain that for a short amount of time. For me, it takes 15 to 20 minutes to get into a good flow state, and then I maintain it for about half an hour to 45 minutes, depending on how complicated the subject is. The more complicated the subject is, the more time I can stay in the flow state, the simpler the subject is. I typically get to the point where I've come up with what I'm going to based on the preparation much faster. It's very important to have the pressure of truncated time. Parkinson's law states that work will expand to fill whatever time gap we allot for it. <clears throat> and so since we're trying to get our mind into a peak state, we are only going to be able to maintain that energy level for a short amount of time. The next step is coming up with your environment. Everybody is different and typically your successful environment is going to be based on your past experiences, uh, a lot of times around schooling. So for me, in a fraternity, I learned to enjoy buzzy environments that have a lot going on. I enjoy the experience of being around a lot of activity and I thrive off of that emotion. So currently when I go out and do idea sessions, I like to go to coffee shops, which have a lot of good conversation. I like fireplaces. Um, I like industrial feel. It's very important that you have a sense of comfort and relaxation there and that the other people around you are also working and being creative. There's something about being around other people that are actively working and being creative that helps the juices flow. It's very important that your environment is something that you protect. When you do find an environment that works for you, you have to be very careful with it. You can't go and have drinks there with friends anymore. You can't go and sit and cruise Instagram or social media, anything like that. When you find an environment that works, the only thing that you can do there is come up with new ideas and get into this flow state. If you try and do multiple other things, you're going to confuse your mind and you're going to find that when you go there, it's not an automatic switch that happens and it just typically won't work at all. <clears throat> the next step and probably the most important step is isolation. So you need to isolate yourself, which I realize is a contradiction given that you're actively going into an uh, environment that has a lot of activity and buzz. So what I personally do is I go to an environment like a coffee shop. I sit in the corner or off to the side so that there's not a lot of peripheral movement happening. I put headphones in. I find music that I can either sing along to in my head <clears throat> or that is a more, more like a, a dance kind of energy feel 
not something that I'm actively going to think about, something that is going to distract my mind away from everything else that's happening. I set the music at a level that is not berating my mind, but it's also completely blocking out everything that's going on in the room around me. I focus my eyes entirely on my capture device, my iPad Pro. And then the last thing is I make sure to guard against anything that will cause me to want to leave that situation. So I dress comfortably. I make sure that I've gone to the bathroom before I've started. I've eaten. Uh, I have a drink while I'm there. Uh, you know, typically something that is tasty but not so strong, never alcoholic. So the goal that I'm looking for when I go into any of these things is I want to walk away with just one good actionable idea. And it's okay if that idea turns out to be nothing, but the goal is that you want to come away with something that you can then go and do the next steps of product development on to validate if it's worth your time. Uh, typically what I find is when I do these sessions, I'll walk away with three or four ideas and then I do product validation on them and only then do I find if any of them are any good. It's very, very important to not spend a lot of time on current products and be really aware of current products when you're trying to come up with this stuff because what I find is I end up iterating on features that would make someone else's product better instead of coming up with features that will be my own product. The goal is to get into a hyper-focused state, a flow state. And so the experience of being inside of this state <clears throat> is elevated heart rate, uh, tingling in the fingertips. Um, I typically, my feet are a bit bouncy or I'm like bouncing my Apple Pencil around. Um, a lot of times I'm, I'm like dancing or kind of moving in my chair along to the music. Um, it's extremely high energy. It's extremely taxing. I never plan to do anything else useful for the rest of the day. Um, I, I typically will tell myself that I'm going to have some kind of reward when I get done. So my reward may be going and working out or, you know, I'll go to a place I like to eat afterwards. So you got like something that you're excited about, looking forward to, you really want to hit that time and then go and reward yourself. And then the last piece of it is following the rabbit hole. So <clears throat> when I first sit down and start thinking about these things, typically uh, it's really bad or rudimentary ideas are going to be the first one that come. That's totally fine. The most important step is that you have to, it, it's like running a marathon. You have to take your first step and you don't want to like immediately sprint. You know, you, you're not going to be like at your full potential when you first start. You just got to start writing. So you sit down and you start capturing ideas. You start writing down things that you've researched and that were interesting to you leading up to your preparation. You start elaborating on things. You run what if scenarios. You come up with possible use cases and interesting aspects of what you're doing. You, you try and create an amalgamation of current technology and how that could be used in other areas that hasn't been done. And what I typically find is that bad ideas are on the road to really good ideas. And you just have to accept that it's extremely important to not let that internal negative feeling set in when you write an idea down that you know is bad. Um, I, I just look at it as this is just a warm up and it's not that this idea is bad. It's just this idea is the one that I first have to get through in order to get to the next ones. And so from that perspective, it's essential. It's essential to have all those. So write it all down, capture it all and then set up another time later when you're gonna go through this list and that's when you're gonna start applying qualifications whether or not you have something good. I hope this video helps. This is my method for coming up with ideas. This is one of the many videos in the new series, the Builder's Toolkit that we're making. And uh, <clears throat> my goal is just to help the community of people out there that are creators and aspiring business people that just didn't immediately get a win the first time they tried to do something. And so it's a, for some of us, it's an extremely long road and uh, it can be really discouraging. And so I just wanted to let you know that you know, you're, you're not alone and that, you know, there's the, the most important thing 
leading up to success is learning what the right things to do are so that you can be successful. Thanks for listening.